I love the parables. They're interesting to read. You can really just chew on them over and over again. And they're great passages to meditate on. It's a really kind of a fun way to think about Jesus' words and how to apply them to your life. As I become more informed about the Reformation, what it means to be reformed, I started to see how important it was to start from the correct posture, uh, to have the right perspective. We need to approach God with humility and respect. Once we do, we start to think about things a little bit differently. It's this change within us, the seed of the Word of God, or the living water that Jesus promises, that changes us from being focused on the world and worldly things and matters of the flesh, to focusing on matters of the eternal, like being spiritually minded instead of worldly minded. This parable is a great example of that. So in this video, we're going to talk about the parable, what Jesus says about the leaven, we'll put it into context, and show how we see proof of this in our own lives. So the parable itself is found in Matthew 13, and it's verse 33. It goes like this. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until it was all leavened. So this might be the shortest of all the parables, but it comes in a string of parables right after Jesus tells the, the point of the parables is to show us the nature of the kingdom of heaven, parable of the sower. Let's get the obvious stuff out of the way. There's a little bit of leaven and a lot of flour, enough to make 90 loaves of bread or enough bread for like 90 people. It's quite a lot of flour. And so the woman hides a little bit of leaven and then it just spreads and spreads and spreads throughout the entire lump. So the obvious interpretation here is that the kingdom will start small with uh, Jesus and his disciples and spread throughout the entire world. Or like the church, it's going to continue to spread everywhere after getting a start. So this makes sense to us. So we tend to pack it up and go home. We really like answers, and if we think we have one, then we can just close the book. But oftentimes parables have more than one answer. So I think there's something pretty profound here for us if we take the time to dig into it. You see, one of the main reasons I think people like the above explanation is because they get to imagine that they're part of something powerful, something unstoppable that's happening now and growing. And that's true, but there's something else happening. It's showing us that the leaven takes over the entire lump. And so we can look at the lump and say it's the world, or we can look at the lump as if it were our personal lives. Do you think that people today let the leaven of the kingdom work throughout their entire lives? Or are there little corners of it that they want to keep from God? Do most Christians you know get really uncomfortable when they think about giving up certain parts of their life to God? Do you know Christians who are dating but not in a godly way? Or do you know Christians who are contemplating divorce or addicted to porn? Do you know Christians who can't, you can't really tell apart from the world? So when the leaven is working its way through our lives, we can see it. We start to look different. In 1 John, we get a picture of what this looks like in our personal lives. In chapter 3, verses 8 through 10, Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him and he cannot keep on sinning because he's been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. Jesus also warns the disciples about the leaven of the Pharisees. So what we see spreading in our lives is a clear indication of if we're walking towards God or if we're walking away from him. The saving grace of Jesus takes hold of us, and when we put our faith in Christ, we start to see changes in how we think about things, about how we see the world. Once we start seeing things differently, truly, we start naming them what God names them. Whether they're good things, like family, fellowship, and love, or whether it's something wicked, self-centeredness, or tolerance of evil, or rejecting the image of God, or sin, we call it what God calls it, and it starts to it causes us to start acting differently. Once we understand the sinful state we're in and the saving grace of Jesus, we respond to that. Once we know the truth, the grace, and the love of God, we want to worship God. We love the things God loves, and we strive to reciprocate that love. And we do that by obeying God's commands. Like the Passover, we have to remove the leaven and accept, accept the sacrifice. The leaven of Satan and wickedness needs to be purged, and when we're saved, we replace it with the leaven of the kingdom. Through Jesus' sacrifice, we can do that. When we have the leaven of the kingdom in us, we strive to follow God's commands. We begin to love the life-giving nature of God's commands and obedience to them. I think the thing we often miss is that we always have leaven in our lives. We always have a seed. See, Jesus uses the examples of the seed and the leaven, and we always associate them with God's word and the kingdom. And if we don't have that seed, then we just have 
what? No seed at all? But that isn't what's happening. Jesus talks about leaven differently in the Gospels and not always is a good thing. In fact, he warns the disciples about the leaven of the Pharisees. We are dead in our sins. We have death or we have life. We have the leaven of the Pharisees or the leaven of the kingdom. This is a binary. There is no neutral middle space. We see the seed of God's word taking root or the seeds of the enemy. Either the leaven of the kingdom is spreading or the leaven of the world. We're either practicing to be spiritually minded and working to that end, or we are working against it. So while it's hopeful and good to think of how the world will see the coming of the kingdom of God, we don't have to wait. We can see it firsthand in our own lives, right now, by putting our faith in Jesus. John chapter 4, verse 10, Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. This wellspring of water, this living water, it's the same thing as the leaven. It's that which wells up in us. Do you see the leaven spreading in your life? Do you see the wellspring of God's love transforming you and spreading to others? What area of your life do you wish it would spread to next? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your word your son, who gives us so much to be thankful for. He came and died on a tree and was resurrected so that we may die in him and we may live in him. Please help us to see the leaven in us, to see what a gift it is to be spiritually minded, and to continue to see the spread of your kingdom. In your son's name, amen.